A title, Overview of Adult Protective Services Investigations. Could you provide an overview of what Adult Protective Services actually does? Ricker Hamilton, Deputy Commissioner, Maine Department of Health and Human Services. Yes, Adult Protective Services will get a referral for abuse, neglect, financial exploitation. In some states, they even investigate reports of self-neglect. The basic things that APS is looking for is they're looking at my capacity, mental capacity. Do I appear to have the ability to give informed consent? If I'm dependent, in what way am I dependent? Do I need help with activities of daily living, independent activities of daily living? What is it that I can do for myself that I can't do for myself? And as is important for those things that I can't do for myself, am I able to, to manage that? Am I able to get someone to help me? And then they're looking to substantiate whether abuse, neglect, or exploitation happened. So in that whole package, they're looking at capacity, dependency, and they're looking to investigate abuse, neglect, and financial exploitation. Is there an adult protective services in every state? Yes, there is, in all 50 states. And is that governed by um, state or federal law? State laws, and it varies, and that's the inter interesting thing with adult protective services. There isn't a federal mandate similar to what people are used to with child protective services. For example, where definitions are the same and a lot of data collection. So that's why I would encourage people, no matter what state you're in, is to take a look at the Adult Protective Services Act or the enabling legislation to, to look at that. It, it varies. It varies on who they investigate. Some, for example, are 18 and older because it's based on incapacity and dependency, and some are based on age, and some of it is 60 or 65. Deborah Holt Knight, New York City Adult Protective Services. Adult Protective Services receives referrals from the community, and anybody in the community can make a referral. Adult Protective work Service workers go out in the field and they investigate the client in their environment, the environment where they're being abused. So they go out to determine whether abuse is indeed occurring. And that can be through interviewing the person who's allegedly abused, um, any person in that person's surrounding, neighbors, friends, relatives, doctors. So the interview and the investigation is quite extensive. We work with law enforcement to help investigate this because there's a social service perspective and there's a law enforcement perspective, but we work collaboratively to investigate these allegations. There are clients who have capacity and those are clients who don't have capacity. If, you have, if you're determined to have capacity, you have the right to self-determination, which means you can make a decision that people don't agree with. But when you don't have capacity, that's where it changes a bit because then we may have to go for a more restrictive intervention, which means we might even have to go to court for guardianship if we feel like you're making bad decisions based on your capacity issues. I often hear uh, what appears to me to be a confusion between a law enforcement investigation and an adult protective services investigation. And it sounds like they're two different things. Can you describe some of those differences? Yes, adult protective services is, is a social work perspective in some jurisdictions where we go out to see socially what's going on. We are not there to prove abuse. We're not there to, to um, determine whether somebody has broken the law, but we're going there to determine whether or not someone has some, a social service need. Nadia Fiorini, Sergeant, Seattle Police Department. Well, the police would look into whether a crime has occurred. So that's our, um, that's our role. And if a crime has occurred, like I said, investigate it and pursue it. Um, while DSHS, or Adult Protective Services, their role is more of a civil investigation. Uh, so it would be, for example, um, if an, a vulnerable adult has a caregiver and that caregiver um, has not fulfilled their obligations or is neglecting or abusing the vulnerable adult, then they would have um, uh, their own civil administrative hearings to try maybe and remove this, this this caregiver um, and their track is a civil track and our track as police is a criminal, um, whether we are gonna have a criminal case or not. We need to do a better job about what we think abuse and neglect and exploitation might be. It may be in an adult protective services statute, but it certainly might not be in the criminal statute. Law enforcement is asking us, what's the crime? Tell me, I'll investigate. And APS is saying, well, this person's been abused, investigate and prosecute. 
when maybe that doesn't even go together. So there is a difference. We need to tie adult protective services and that investigation of whether I have capacity and whether I've been abused and neglected to what are those criminal statutes that our partners in law enforcement can help us come in and gather evidence and prosecute. So on one side, we may be in an APS situation where the person may not have been abused or neglected and, and needs help. That to me is a different kind of case, providing resources, offering a case plan, hooking the person up with family members if they want to, allowing that senior to make the decisions and drive that process, as opposed to a crime has been committed, regardless of age, even for those of us who are older, and law enforcement is going to investigate that and see if it's prosecutable. What about victims who say, I don't want your help, um, I, I'm refusing any services? What can you do in a situation like that? If an APS caseworker goes out and someone says, no, that's exactly what I'm going to say when you come to my house. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. I want, don't want to lose my independence. Um, I want to stay in my own home, but I don't know how I got in this trouble and I don't know how to get out. But the last thing I'm going to do is tell you about it. So if an older victim says, says no to me, I make sure to explain who I am, make sure that I can to the extent possible, even through the screen door if I have to, what it is that the services that I provide. And I try at the same time to talk about what I can and can't do. The person may tell me to go away. The person say that I'm gonna come back. That's fine, I leave my card. And I may come back at a different time of day. If this was the morning, I may come back in the afternoon. I would have tried to try to get some information. But we need to have rapport and as, and as well-intentioned as you and I are, or any of us are, dealing with any victim, but especially an older victim, we're a stranger. They don't know us. And especially if we know the dynamics of elder abuse, where the vast majority of the perpetrators are family members or loved ones, they've already been taken advantage by someone that they would never dream would do that. So a stranger comes to the door and says, I'm from the state and I'm here to help. I'm not gonna believe it. It's gonna take a little rapport building. At the same time, I'm also going to try to find out how that person was tied to the community, to family, or other agencies, because that might be the way to get in as well. How about someone that appears to have some sort of cognitive impairment? What, what can a social worker who is trying to initiate contact with that sort of person do in those circumstances? The Adult Protective Services caseworker, unless they have training beyond what's normally trained, they can only do a beginning assessment of capacity. Uh, they can take a look at the person and seeing how they're acting, knowing that there may be medical problems and not psychiatric problems that present in the same way. I'm not eating, I'm not drinking, I'm not taking my meds. May look as though the same as I have a dementia or Alzheimer's or some other disability. What the APS worker can do is in, in most states, and once again check with your individual state programs, is we can try to have a psychologist do a home visit. Um, and to begin that assessment. Um, in the end, if the person lacks capacity and the APS caseworker feels as though the person is in real danger, our eyes and our nose tell us that the person is in danger. They're presenting in a way that's, that's far outside the normal spectrum or confusion that you and I would have after a medical procedure or being in a hospital for a while. Then we may take a look at, at working with the courts, probate courts, may take a look at trying to get a, a, psych, a psychiatric assessment of the person, maybe even working with their primary physician. But Adult Protective Services is charged with doing that initial assessment that may lead us down different roads, roads that are determined by policy and procedure. Words appear. Consult your state statutes and local professionals to learn more about APS investigations in your community. Logos appear. NCALL, www.ncall.us, Terranova Films, terranova.org. Funded by the U.S. Department of Justice, Office on Violence Against Women and Elder Justice Initiative, www.justice.gov slash elderjustice. A disclaimer, this project was supported by grant number 2014 AXTA K050, awarded by the Office on Violence Against Women and by the Elder Justice Initiative, U.S. Department of Justice. The opinions, findings, conclusions, and recommendations expressed in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Department of Justice, Office on Violence Against Women, or the Elder Justice Initiative.